tonight's entertainment. This is episode 33 of the Cutting Room Movie Podcast, where we deliver, and not necessarily in this order, movie reviews, interviews, and a whole lot of hijinks. I am your humble host, Tom Peace Pipe Detlock, and I am joined by Max Rain Dance Cook, Dave Rainbow Pace, and Joseph Free Love Christiana. <laughs> We will, we will have three movie reviews tonight from our classic review theme, Hippie Movies, as we will take a look at the 1969 classic Easy Rider, directed by Dennis Hopper, and the 2007 Sean Penn film Into the Wild. But first, let's kick things off with a new DVD release review of the 2012 romantic comedy Wonderlust, and Free Love Himself is going to give you the introduction. Take it away, free love. Hey, man, out of sight. It's peace and love on the cutting room. Far out, man. Listen, never, ever trust a man, man. Turn on, tune in, and drop out. And always remember, never ever eat the brown acid. That's right, man. All these and many other cartoon hippie sayings can be yours on Freedom Rock. Four records and three cassettes are only $19.95. And if you order now, you'll get a free genuine hippie bandana, man. So here's how to order. Ugh. Oh, the best laid plans. What happened to you, hippies? You traded in your indignation. <laughs> you traded in your indignation for an affected marijuana confusion and an image of Che Guevara, rendered impotent by tie-dye. Your mojo, that counterculture credibility that had the squares of the mid-60s shaken in their conservative warmongering pants, has been assimilated, trivialized, packaged, and sold back to you. And then, oh Jesus Christ, you grew up and then sold yourself back to yourself. Oh, you American sons and daughters, you had so much promise. But you cashed in and then stumbled onto the American stage, writhing in self-mocking gestures. And from that stage, you entertained your own sons and daughters with reductive parables that told them this. Your greatest notions of idealism are empty and easily bought and sold, so you might as well not even try. All three of the films we're taking a look at tonight examine hippie ideology. Each one celebrates the merits of its principal values before exposing its weakness. That is, hippie culture's incompatibility with real life, whether that's ideological, spiritual, or as is the case in the 2012 film Wanderlust, practical. By far the lightest of the films of the trio, David Wayne's comedy sets a cartoonish tableau of hippie culture as the backdrop for a couple's marital trials and tribulations. Immediately after buying an overpriced shoebox studio apartment in New York's coveted West Village, George and Linda, played by Paul Rudd and Jennifer Aniston, find themselves unemployed and unable to maintain their high price tag lifestyle. Out of options, the couple hits the road to stay with George's shithead brother and his family in Atlanta. It's to be temporary, just until they get back on their feet. Well, en route, they make a stop at the Elysium Bed and Breakfast, which, as it happens, is a hippie commune. Oops, sorry. A place for intentional living. A place where nudism, music, and the best damn pot you've ever smoked create an atmosphere that's peaceful and, ostensibly, heaven on earth. It's just what the fleeing city rats need. George and Linda have the best night of their lives, skinny dipping, getting high, and laughing around the fire. But, by contrast, when they get to George's brother's McMansion in suburban Atlanta, they find a family overdosing on consumerist materialism, a family mired in alcoholism, mainstream culture, infidelity, and general small-mindedness. In effect, they're a typical American family that is depleted of any joy whatsoever. It's not long before the couple head back to the commune for good, or at least a two-week trial period. And once aboard there, they take turns struggling with the hippie rules and regulations. They wrestle with veganism, doorless bathrooms, the morality of swatting a fly and hallucinogens. But it's the notion of free love that will either make or break the couple. Meanwhile, the commune is being threatened by big business developers who want the land for a high-priced casino. This wouldn't be a problem except the wise elder statesman of the compound, played by Alan Alda, misplaced the deed in typical stoner fashion. <laughs> now this film seems to be having a polarizing effect out there. Audiences tend to either love it or hate it, 
and it seems to me that two issues make themselves apparent. First, it's billed as a romantic comedy starring Jennifer Aniston, and though it hits all the guideposts in terms of story arc of the typical rom-com, the ribald humor and prevalent absurdist nudism is probably off-putting to the doughy-brained, oprified, middle American sensibilities. Are people still so uptight about seeing the human body? Are people still resting all their hopes and dreams on the prepackaged image of an American sweetheart Jennifer Aniston? Geez, I must be really out of touch if so. If you're listening to this and you've answered yes to those above questions, seriously, go fuck yourself. And yes, lest there be any question, that was me giving out a giant hi-hat. Ah. The second problem... <laughs> the second problem... <laughs> The second probable issue is that some audiences may be unaware, ambivalent about, or have a general disdain for hippie culture, and so don't connect with the humor. This is understandable, and if you fit into this category, this one probably isn't for you, so just stay away from it. But the fact is that I watched the film twice, once up by myself on a lark, and once with my wife for the show, and I enjoyed it both times thoroughly. Okay, it's not exactly groundbreaking filmmaking. As a Wayne crossover, like I mentioned, it fits the rom-com mold pretty much squarely. And though it's not as audacious as David Wayne's Wet Hot American Summer, or The Ten, that Wayneian flair for the absurd is nonetheless present here, and I really get off on it. In any case, it's certainly worth a rental if you're looking for a good movie to watch with your non-Oprah zombified date. The cast and the filmmakers... <laughs> The cast and the filmmakers are obviously having a ton of fun here and it's downright infectious. Before concluding this introduction to our discussion, I must own that in my late teens to early 20s, yes, I admit it, I was certainly what might be labeled a neo-hippie. In the desperation burnout culture of my town in the late 80s and early 90s, in the wake of collective suicides of four local teenagers, a kind of atrophy existed in my town, Bergenfield. You found that your best shot at self-empowerment was by closing yourself off in a haze of hallucinogenic drugs laced with the sounds of the dead or the beer coke frenzy of speed metal Metallica and Iron Maiden. The hippies and the metalheads generally coexisted peacefully in my town. As long as you were loaded and burned out, you were given the finger to the adult world and that meant you were okay. And the neo-hippie culture of shrooms, acid, and sunshine mescaline buttons was better suited for my natural proclivity for introspection and self-exploration. It was an act of peaceful resistance to the hypocrisy of the adult world, and we lived with the remnants of a dead ideology that was only vaguely understood, but that wasn't what mattered. The truth was we were wasted and nothing mattered. The rest of the world was a blotted ink smear, and I found I could catch glimpses of truth not by, by looking outward, but by looking inward while the music played. As with any tribal culture founded on strongly defined ideologies, tribal cultures such as name any religion, straight on down to skater punk and today's geek gamer subculture, I realized at some point that hippiedom had, sometime in the past, been reduced to a collection of postures, empty ritual and tribal masks rendered meaningless. It's easier to adorn the garments of a subculture than to put his ideals into practice for an identity, but I won't come down on it too hard and I'll have some trouble being apologetic about it either. My days as a nomad following fish in the dead up and down the coast and across this beautiful country were golden. As I eventually grew and shook myself loose of the tribe, I understood that the answers to the human dilemma cannot be found by identifying with the gang, even a gang as laid back as the hippies. But like the couple in Wanderlust, I realized too, that there is indeed a seed of truth in the ideology, something still beautiful and worthwhile in the cliches. I realized that it was a gift that was given to me if I was brave enough to take it, and that it was up to me to pass it on. It was up to me to apply it to the otherwise mundane practicalities of my life. I carry that tiny bit of hippie around with me to this day. It's in my giant man necklace, I suppose. <laughs> so I just so I just opened up, my, up myself there, guys, and I'll, I'm I'm ready to take it. So uh, oh, I guess sorry. fire away. <laughs> well, well, you know, listen. Let me let me like before we go off into the insanity, which is what we're gonna wind up going into uh, probably sooner than later. Let let me at least say this: I really, really, really enjoyed this movie a lot. Did you yeah. see? I, and I was it's... not expecting to like it. Ten minutes in, I had a great big smile on my face. I was getting the the Wayne humor. I was digging the script. I was digging the vibe. Uh, to me, Jennifer Aniston is like the new Terry Gar. I was totally, you know, I'm t I'm totally falling in love with this woman, and I never, never liked her. 
But I really, really had so much fun with this movie, Joe. Surprisingly. It's so it's so funny that you say that, man, because I watched it um, right around the time you guys... I'm going to just give you guys a little bit of backstory why I picked it here. Is that when you guys were doing your Gummo review and uh, talking about your hometowns and everything, I, wa- I, I was listening to that conversation and just right around that same day or something, I just picked this as a lark. I just had nothing to do. It was streaming on Netflix, so I, I just hit play and I wasn't expecting to like it at all. But then I saw David Wayne direct it I was like, oh, this might be all right. And then, yeah, I hate Jennifer Aniston, but I liked it a, a lot. And I couldn't believe that I did. And I, I was surprised that you said you liked it. Tom. Yeah, I totally think it. Yeah. It's, it's pretty polarizing. Like, people really despise it or really like it. And it was just odd yesterday going to Easter dinner. And I had just finished writing that review. And I walked into uh, my aunt's house. And they're all sitting around there talking about this movie and how much they loved it, which was really a weird, weird sensation. That's so. really, really uh, strange. They, You just, you know, randomly walked into that uh, conversation, Joe? Yeah, like, they were like, oh, I just... You didn't spark it. You, they were... Not at all. Wow. Not at all. That's, Not that's at bizarre. All. And this, these are, you know, my aunt is older, my mother's older, my cousins are not film buffs at all, and they're not into the absurd, absurdity either. So I was having trouble figuring out what people really hated about this, other other than the Jennifer Aniston thing and the... Um, I guess the nudity. So I maybe I think maybe Max is I think maybe Max is going to tell us what what's so terrible about this movie. Well, we'll get to Max in just two seconds. Joe, you have seen David Wayne films before. I I have not. Uh, is this guy an impressive uh, filmmaker? I I like him a lot, man, and I really love absurd stuff. Um, I've seen Wet Hot American Summer in the Ten. I need to go see Stella. I guess mm-hmm. is his most popular one, or and I haven't seen that one yet, but I I will. But uh, yeah, I really. I really dig him, man. I, Wet Hot American Summer is better than this one, actually. I think. Now, is that the film you were recommending uh, for me to watch? Because I am supposedly a big fan of the uh, Meatballs movie. <laughs> well, you said you were a fan of the Meatballs movie. So, and I definitely... really cannot stand it. I get reduced to, uh, yeah, Tom Detlove. Yeah, he's, you know, he likes movies like Meatballs. You know, that's not what you're doing. You said you like the movie, so I recommended it to you. I thought you'd get a kick out of it. That's all. Fair enough. No, no ulterior motive. Fair there. enough. We got Dave Pace and we have Max Cook. Uh, let's start with Max. Uh, what, what do you think of Max on Wonderlust? <laughs> well, first off, I enjoyed Joe's thoughts on subculture, I think, more than the film. <laughs> Boy. I'll tell you something else. This Jennifer Aniston. She gets a bum rap. Mm -hmm. She is a miraculous actress. This woman can pull anything off. I'm starting to see it. And the fact that she takes chances like this makes me very, very happy. Right. And I got to tell you something else. I'm kind of a closet Paul Rudd fan. Mm. That dude really uh, knows how to put the put-upon guy into, you know, the, the best possible mode. I mean... I really enjoyed him very much in this film. But as a guy who kind of loves hippie culture, as a guy who understands what Elysium was uh, shooting for, I don't know. It was, I don't know. I I enjoyed this a lot more than Red Hot American Summer. And I oh, right. I actually love The State, which all of these uh-huh. people are from The State, which was an MTV sketch show. Wow. That didn't last yeah, very yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, they were all they all came out of that. All the, totally. all these guys. So yeah. Even the I guy mean, that, that co-wrote the movie with uh, Wayne, the Ken Marino, was it was yeah, Oh my god, hilarious. Ken Marino? They they are all in Wet Hot American Summer, man. Ken and, Marino and, and is Paul, Yeah, and Paul <laughs> Rudd is hilarious in that movie as like the cool guy, the cool camp counselor in the in the camp. He's freaking hilarious. So Marino, because, Marino's a talented dude. You've never dude. seen Marino better than in uh Party Down, which is a show about caterers, which used to be on uh, Showtime, I think. Party Down? I'll, yeah. It only I'll lasts tell you what, two seasons. The funniest part of this movie was when he threw the fit in that kitchen. I could not. I, I, rewound, I rewound it like two, three times. <laughs> it was freaking hilarious. Tom, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. It's brilliant. I mean, his outfit, the no socks with the... Uh... You know, with those brown loafers. <laughs> I mean, it's just everything about. I mean, it's brilliant. It's brilliantly done. It's spot on. It really is. The drunk, you know, the drunk, probably pill popping wife that sits around all day, you know. Drinking and, margaritas from the margarita machine. Yeah, right. like 10 o'clock in the morning, you know. <laughs> I mean, seriously. I mean, in their big 
dopey plastic fucking mansion. It's oh man, it's it's so, it's right on. I, I'm really looking forward to hearing Dave rally. I, I don't know what Dave's. I have, really have no idea how Dave's going to come in on this. Yeah, this but, he's uh, the wild card right now, Dave Page. Were you Max? Were you offended by the like them goof mocking uh, hippie culture, or did you just not like the like the whole movie? Oh no, no, I wasn't offended. I just uh, I watched the entire thing, and I gave it zeal, and uh, I just you know it. it it wasn't as amusing as I would. I was. Mm. I thought the premise was much funnier than the execution. Really? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I thought there was so, like when they had the uh, the scene where they all sipped tea. What was what was the tea called, Joe? The trip out tea. Oh, the sir. I know the circle of truth. I forget what they called uh, yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> thought that was beautiful. So like when it went to moments like that. But come on, when you're gonna when you when you're gonna give me storylines like the deed, you know I I with the see, and, yeah. I mean, you don't need any of that. All you need is this couple lost trying to figure out what the fuck they want out of life, right? And Max. getting stuck in this situation. You don't need all of these. I don't know, governal comedic yeah. things like right. the. I didn't like any of that stuff with the city people. We're gonna come I, in and we're gonna do this, and we're, you know. Yeah. yeah, you know it's so it's such a cliche, and I think David Wayne when he does like especially just knowing from the Wet Hot American Summer is that he does all the he he knows these cliches and he's just doing it tongue in cheek kind of you know what I mean really so, uh, yeah dude <laughs> it's hard to do yeah. things tongue in cheek though with big budgets you know what I'm saying it's, Joe? yes it, and it is stars, and especially it's very and difficult. It's, uh, yes, and what he's doing here, and that, I guess that might be where the incongruity is, is that he's trying to make a, so he's trying to cross over into the mainstream a bit here. You know what I mean? So that tongue in cheek part of this this film is probably not playing the way that it does in his other pictures. Yeah, but look what it did to a guy like uh, David Gordon Green making that crossover. It kind of like you know, I mean, yeah, I'm sure he's making a lot of money, but artistically, he's, you know, I mean, right. he's not he's not doing what he should be doing. Right, Dave. I, I can't. I, I really want to hear what Dave has to say. Tell oh me. God, let's just keep ignoring Dave. He's having so much fun. <laughs> Do we really got to bring pace in here? Ignore me at your peril. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dave. <laughs> what do you? Uh, what do you? What's on your mind, David? You, you know what? I'm going to surprise everybody here a little bit and 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 say that overall I enjoyed it. Nice. Uh, it, it it was. It's charming. I, I'm a big Paul Rudd fan. Uh, I like what he does, and I I know I don't sound like a dude who's gonna be a Paul Rudd fan, but I <laughs> I, I, I am. I don't know what to say. He's charming. He's very charming, uh, and and Jennifer Aniston I, I I think is a really wonderful actor. I mean, she does an amazing amazing job, uh, and she's great in this movie. She's a lot of fun. She's charming as well. Uh, there's a lot of fun shit going on in this movie. A lot of you know, a lot of fun scenes. I, I especially love the, the the whole. You know, uh, they weren't quite the truth or dare, but that whole. You know, we're gonna we're gonna you know share our deep dark secrets around the campfire kind of thing. I, shit like that was great. I I, yeah. I, I enjoyed all that. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I what I didn't like was a lot of the stuff Max talked about. Which mm -hmm. was just some of the shoehorned plot stuff. That, yeah, it's that like you have Alan Alda, and you're reducing him to like a dopey guy in a wheelchair that misplaced some important. Yeah, well, like a to be fair, plot. Tom. No? To be fair, it's a mobility scooter. <laughs> <laughs> fair so I don't know. You, you know, I mean, I think the thing that bothers me about it, if anything really bothers me about this movie, is that it's. It's making a point about our culture and selling that point back to the very culture it's sort of railing against. <laughs> and, and I don't really know what the objective is. Like, I don't know if it's like, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that people are going to see this movie and maybe not want to end up like McMansion guy with like the giant stainless steel barbecue and and the kids crying <laughs> and the giant SUV. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like I just don't know if I just don't know if they mean it or not, or if it, this is like a cynical exercise in like, hey, 
you know what? People are into counterculture these days. Let's uh, let's make something that feeds into that a little bit. And and I just I, there's a little bit of what do you gotism about this, you know? We're a bunch of guys sitting around a boardroom. What do you got? You know what's what's hot right now? You know, and it's it's always all oh, Paul Rudd's hot right now. Paul Paul Rudd's big. Uh, what else you got? <laughs> uh, well, we got uh, we got Occupy Wall Street. Occupy Wall Street. What do you got, ism? What do you yeah. got? <laughs> yeah, man. These, you know, and then hey, next- Dave, you're you're right. I mean, all these things you're throwing into a a, a successful stew makes sense. You know, Paul Rudd hot, Occupy Wall Street all over the news, right? I mean, it's it's all right there. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. I don't know David Wayne, and I haven't really watched his movies. So Joe watching his movies is trying to you know tell us that. He might, you know, he really might have a bigger, bigger hold I, on this material than than we think. I, I don't think that he's got any sort of uh, ideology that he's really pushing forth, and I think that might be sort of what Dave, Dave might be sort of speaking to is that like there's no, there's no strong like conviction, there's no conviction in the film. You know what I mean? As to like what he's trying to say about all these people that he's lampooning, I think that David Wayne just takes his aim at everybody and everything and just friggin' lambase it. You know what I mean? And on, on like, like uh, the Paul Rudd thing, I don't think is really holds true because I think Paul Rudd was, uh, came up w- with this whole troop through, uh, you know, the state or wherever it is that they came up from, you know what I mean? But I do see the counterculture thing. Um, but, you know, he's goofing on uh, the counterculture hippies as much as he's goofing on the McMansion sure, stuff, sure, yeah. as, mu- as much as he's goofing on, you know, documentary filmmaking in New York City, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, <laughs> like, it was... The like, HBO he's just... <laughs> meeting is priceless. <laughs> Yeah, it's hilarious, like you know, and it's like like it's all hilarious. it's all hilarious. It just shows you how silly everybody is, really. Which you know, and and that's and that's as far as I take this. You know, it's not like I, I, I just take it as like a white film that just shows you how ridiculous everybody is. You know what I mean? Right. Well, you know, guys, Christiana mentioned uh, during his uh, opening that uh, you know, uh, his late teens, early early twenties, he definitely had. Uh, <laughs> You know, he definitely had like a lot of, you know, hippieisms to him. But to really understand Joe and what I really uh, am excited to tell everyone about is that in Wonderlust, have you really just watched the Seth character? <laughs> Basically, the, that that's hippie sleaziness. <laughs> Joe, Christiana and our good friend Joe Taverny through and through. Yeah. Big time. Wow! Time, to go out to the bars with these guys and watch these guys maneuver around with their, you know, with their long hair and beards and their sandals. <laughs> ah. That's hilarious, ah. Tom. Well, first of all, I want to say that that's ridiculous, Tom. Yeah. That's yeah, just it's pre- ridiculous. It's, it's, it's absolutely yeah, preposterous. It's preposterous, yeah. yeah but, uh, but it's what, true, Joe. No, it's not true, yes, it Tom. Is. I beg to differ. Yes, it is. <laughs> but, okay, anyway, what, what, what do the other two guys have? Uh, are you guys have any history with hippies? Anything? Any feelings about him one way or the other? I don't. I don't know. I. I think my my history with with hippies has been very much at a distance. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's it's it, it's mostly honestly my connection to to hippies mostly comes through uh, mostly comes through Hunter Thompson, right? And and his insights about sort of what ended up happening to the hippie movement. And and to some extent, I mean, I was a big reader of of, of Tim Leary. Uh, back in the day, I was huge into Tim Leary and, and Robert Ann Wilson and, and, and all these guys who were really uh, kind of big thinkers in, 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 in the hippie movement. And yeah, I mean, and I, I think that was sort of my interest in it. It was always this weird, I don't know, almost intellectual interest in it. Uh, I, I could never see myself in a drum circle. Uh <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine? Could you imagine being subjected to that? Seriously, you know, I was never. I'm not huge. Like, I'm not. I'm not huge on on the music. Um, I'm not huge. I mean, I'm not against it, but I'm not huge on it. Uh, I'm not huge on the everything's cool, man. Woo! Uh, you know, it's not a... Yeah, because it's not, Dave. Everything well, isn't cool, man. But, but you know, there's something to be said. Like, there, there's an interesting, I think, arc to 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 the hippies, you know? And and I think 
a good postscript to this discussion of hippie movies. There's this great uh, independent film uh, made here in Canada by uh, this filmmaker named Panos Cosmatos, whose whose dad directed Rambo. And uh, <laughs> yeah, George George Cosmatos. Yeah, 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 and yeah. and and he did uh, he did Cobra as well. And anyway, his son. Yeah, Panos, and and he also did uh, what's it called that uh, western in uh, Tombstone. Yep, that's yeah. right. That's right. So his, his his son Panos is is a really incredible filmmaker. Wow! Um, and he made this movie called Beyond the Black Rainbow, and it takes place in like 1983, and it's basically this hippie commune uh, that has retreated inside, right? Because that's what happened to the hippies, right? They stopped trying to change the world outside because they got their heads beat in by cops and shit. Mm-hmm. And uh, and with LSD and all that, all retreated inside, you know, and they all started trying to change their brains and change the way they think and, and explore the world inside their heads instead of trying to change the external world. And and that's a lot of what what Beyond the Black Rainbow is about. And it's a it's a crazy movie. It's a really crazy movie, like visually, musically, everything like that. It's a fucking head trip uh, and, and probably a good postscript to anybody who wants to see. A little bit of that side of it's a real dark view of what happens to the hippies. We'll definitely try to post a trailer for that uh, for everyone to check out. Man. It's on Netflix, it's incredible. Yeah, definitely. Um, Joe, Max, you want to respond to what Dave just said? Oh, I think that I, I think that he's that's probably right on. I, I just uh, the Hunter Thompson passage about the death of the air uh, when he's looking out that. Um, hotel room was just beautiful, man. I, I mean, I don't think you can say it better than that. How the the selling out of that culture and everything, and then that just that kind of just leads right into what you're saying, that the hippie movement moved I- inward as f- as opposed to being an outward, you know, reaction to political stuff and you know the the war is over. So the hippie co- the hippie identification became something that was um, something that something that was led to introspection through drugs, I guess, you know, mm. didn't all these guys flee to Canada anyway, Joe. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. man. <laughs> right. Dave. <Yeah. laughs> Probably. Max, Max, were you, do you have any, uh, history with hippie dumb? Yeah. I was raised by hippies, man. My really? mom was a hippie. My uncles were hippies. You know, it's, it, it became an ethic and, um, I, I totally got it. I mean, my whole life. I mean, it's 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 kind of why I'm sort of fucked right now because, you know, I'm not, I'm not really a capitalist as much as I try to make money. You know, I kind of have this very sensitive sort of earthy, you know, approach to life, and that's why, in the film Wanderlust, I was like, I understand they're satirizing it, and I understand the horse head through the doorway and. You know, you're just trying to poop and there's a black guy talking to you. And I thought that all that was really funny, but I just didn't think it was funny enough. Like I could have come up with 50 more jokes that might have been, you know, more telling. Not that I could make a better movie. I could not because these state people are very, very funny. This cast was amazing. You know, all the people, all the creative minds involved were great, but it, it felt more like a device than like, Let's really submerse this uptight couple in this subculture because that's what it is. And, you know, I feel like in many ways I'm kind of like a child of of hippies and it's kind of like fucked me up for the real world, you know? I mean, it certainly turned me into a hedonist, but that doesn't help me any. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) So, Max, because of your hippie upbringing, you have a very... A difficult time selling yourself as <laughs> as an actor oh my god i'm i'm the very worst I, I was just talking to my wife today about how i'm watching these movies that we're talking about today in the cutting room easy rider and mm. and especially into the wild i mean Boy. this is a kid who made a very bold choice to live his life on his own terms and how it destroyed him and i'm like oh my god if i had half the balls right you know and now I'm at a point where I'm middle-aged, you know, the, the best of times is behind me. I'm staring down the barrel of God knows what, and what the hell am I going to do now? How, how can I apply these ethics now? I'll just, I'll just be silly. Yeah. 
it's hard. Yeah, these you know, were really hard movies to look at. I agree. Now. Yeah, because I, and I get that. I had that same feeling when watching, uh, especially Easy Rider and Into the Wild, because I felt I for the first time I started to feel like an old man. Like I related to the Hal Holbrook character at this point in my life, <laughs> and we'll get to that later. But you know, it, you're so right. You know, you're so right, Max. I definitely uh, feel what you're saying, uh, guys. Living on a commune, is this something that would, I mean, if given the opportunity, would is this something that might interest anyone? No. No. It, I mean, not me. No. It Pace, depends Max. entirely on how hot the chicks are. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> That's right. There That's exactly go. what it depends upon. And no one here, no one here would allow themselves and their wife to practice free love with anybody. No. That's ridiculous. I'll tell you though, man, the traveling comedy. Like you wouldn't want Taverny coming out of your bedroom going, I just made sweet love to your wife. <laughs> ridiculous. No. That doesn't interest you? <laughs> no. No, not at all. Tom, I'm sorry to say that does not. What if but I'll tell you, if, man, I, what if you know Jenna what? Payne came walking out of the, out of your bedroom and said, Oh my god, I just made sweet love to your wife. <laughs> <That would be laughs> good. <laughs> that would be much different, but you know, like go like traveling around to these shows, Tom. When I was in my late teens and my early twenties, I tell you, man, I had the the most fucking fun yeah. ever, dude. It was a, just it was insane. It was a big, it was so much fun, dude. To, to a, get in a truck, to get you did, yeah, yeah, maybe more than one. I know we definitely went to one in Philadelphia. Dude, you get dude, into it was like a show. escape escape from New York in the parking lot. It was a fucking it's show. fucking great, dude. You just party with everybody who's there. Everybody just wants to hang out and party. There's girls everywhere. They might not be as you know up up kept and as primmed and proper as you know, but they're some really beautiful girls out there, man. And everybody's cool, and that's a that's the difference too. Is that nobody's gonna give you like even if it's an affect that they're gonna be friendly to you. Mm-hmm. Most people are there because they're tired of you walking around to everywhere they look and everyone giving you an evil eye you walk around you just go hey man how you doing yeah. and just hanging out i guess you're right <laughs> joe it is a bit more uplifting than walking around in a mall a mall or you go to these you know when we were younger you go to like the the metal shows and all these other shows yeah. and everybody's ready to get into a freaking yeah. fist fight you yeah know? very true that's not so freaking fun man. yeah i know <laughs> you what you're know? saying no because i've been you know because when i would go to shows there would be a lot of Slam dancing involved. Like when I see Fishbone, you know, and they're, you know, they say lyrically, they're, you know, trying to speak of peace and harmony, but there's always, like, because of the fast music, always lunatics in the crowd that just want to, like, start kicking and punching. I got my, my front two teeth were, were, were chipped at a Fishbone <laughs> concert when I, was seven, when I was 17. That wow. sounds like a lot of fun. So, what's your, where does your disdain for hippies come from, Tom? Or do you disdain? No, it sounds like I don't, don't have disdain for. I don't know. I just, I. It, I think you kind of do. It's a, see me. I'm. You know. I don't know. It's just more about what I. You know. I. I related more to, like the late '70s punk rock movement than I did the late '60s hippie movement. Yeah, right. You know. So. Right. Uh, it's funny to you know listen to like a so, like like Elvis Costello does the song Peace, Love, and Understanding, which lyrically you know is definitely hippie influenced but the music is punk rock you know and it's kind of interesting to see those two cultures musically clash in that song which kind of makes the song brilliant and well yeah but i mean at, at the same point though there is there is a dovetailing of punk and hippie i any think so too culture. and you know i because was thinking about I, that sure I you mean, know it gets yeah yeah okay. i mean the hippie the hippie movement like really influenced all these other movements if you think about it you know i mean seriously you know, we t- well, it go, you know, the hippies came from earlier, the, be- the beats, beats, right? Yeah, the That's what came from, yeah, you know, and, hippies, yeah. you know, there's always been counterculture, always, you know, and the hippies certainly don't have, um, you know, cornered the market on, uh, well, so I guess that's the wrong phrasing there, but on, on revolution, you know, I mean, no, you, you know what I'm saying? No. But yeah, I mean, you know, hippies were really threatening people. In the, it was very threatening to mainstream America in the early '60s for sure, man. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was when they, it was when they stopped, when they lost 
their edge is when they started becoming sort of cartoonish, you know, and it, it stopped being about the values of what they held and more about, you know, wearing the tie dye and, you know, dropping acid. You know? Right. That it becomes a scene almost like, uh, see, that's what I don't like about any, you know, even the punk rocks. Like, you know, I have as much disdain for like a punk rocker that needs to walk around with a mohawk and whip, rip jeans, you know, and a leather jacket, you know. Well, like I said in my in my review, there it's easier to put on the the costumes of yeah. a counterculture. Yeah, you should, or, you should or try someone. to you should try to uh, have all cultures inside of you, all kinds of you know all that stuff. Should you know you should try to incorporate all that stuff inside of you, not just belong to one. Yeah, but what what ends up happening with anything, even religion, patriotism, anything, you just you cling on to the accoutrement of it, and you don't, and you just start to, and you forget what's at the heart of it, and what's the what's at the truth of it, and that that happened with hippies, it happens with punk, it happens with. Every, everything because you, you start just having people who are, are don't believe don't even understand what they're doing yeah. they're just they're just identifying it's like something. it's like watching a uh, uh a person walk around in walmart with a big american flag on their on their t-shirt like well, you, know, you don't understand what the hell you're doing all right if you, what ask, do you do, if like you're... it's the most unpatriotic thing to do is to shop in a walmart and you got like an american flag on your chest it's yeah, you, you ask you ask them who the president is, and they probably wouldn't even be able to tell. Oh, the, they the they'll president. tell you the, oh, vice, the vice president. president. <laughs> the vice president, yeah, <laughs> definitely. All right, guys, let's rate uh, Wonderlust. Uh, avoid rent. Buy. We'll start with uh, Joe Christiana. Joe. Oh, I think it's a rent. I mean, you know, it's it's definitely a good date movie. You know, it's a light light hearted kind of stuff. If if you're not offended by nudity, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Pace. So if you want to talk to your significant other about wife swapping, (laughs) rent this movie. Let the conversation happen naturally, and you could find yourself having a lot of fun. Mr. Max Cook. I really love the scene with Jennifer Aniston and Alan Alda at the diner eating lots of varied meats. (laughs) <laughs> I thought that was very yeah. cathartic or very oh, funny. Yeah, or that could also be called Any Tom Detloff Breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> now, Tom, that's interesting you bring that up because before we started the show, um, you were sucking on something, and I'm like, what the fuck? And you said, well, I am trying again to quit smoking. Is right. that true? It's very true. I'm now uh, on a, uh, I guess, my 28th hour once again of not oh my gosh. smoking a cigarette. So. Is that inspired by our conversation with Sherry Strahl or what? I mean, did you yeah. gain anything from that? Yeah, I, I did. Uh, it made me think a lot about, um, w- you know, how I'm going to spend the next, you know, 30 years of my life, you know, or I hope, you know, even have 30 years of my life, you know. So I want to feel better. And I'm watching these. You know what? And Into the Wild really in- inspired me a lot yesterday, too. Which which had a lot to do with with yeah. uh, this this decision. That That's film well. can affect a life. Yeah. Well, I know. I mean, it's like the fourth or fifth time I've watched it from beginning to end. And uh, uh, you talk know. about masochism. Yeah, it's it's, <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful movie. It's one of my favorites of all time. But Max, t- give me a, uh, a rating on this. Oh, I think it's a very healthy rental. Um, I think it's a a lot of fun. I just think that uh, all of the minds involved could have delivered us something much smarter without devices. And, you know, I mean, as much as I love the guy with the the giant rubber dick who was naked and made his own wine and wrote a book about Washington, (laughs) I just think that could have been, I don't know. Max, would you drink that that wine? No. (laughs) No? No. (laughs) Well, not not in the essence of the scene. I mean, That's Paul Rudd about. walks up and looks at the dude standing there <laughs> with his dick hanging out. And I love that he had the little dick sling, the little fabric over his cock. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, what's that for? That was for? very like, funny. Cubes. It was yeah. very funny. But, but it was just like, come on. I know you people are so brilliant. All those There's... actors are so wonderful, though. The There's acting so is really funny great. Moments. There's so many funny moments in it, man. I just, I yeah. Just, and it was really go. great to see uh, Lauren Ambrose from Six Feet Under, mm-hmm. as the Prego chick who had the half-breed. That was awesome. Yes, yes. I love her. She was her. great. I love How about her. Ray Liotta popping up? As oh, Ray Liotta. Liotta. A naked Ray Liotta. <laughs> that, was, that was a gift from the gods. <laughs> the fact that Ray Liotta agreed to take a couple of photos of himself. And he was naked on the bike. 
<laughs> I'm giving away too much. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, listen, I think that this is an, uh, a really entertaining date movie as well. Uh, I had a lot of fun with this. I did not expect much. I really had a smile on my face for the most part throughout this film. Uh, it's a simple, fun movie. I am definitely going to give it a solid rent. Gentlemen, it is time to review a couple of the classic films as we move on with our hippie theme. And our next movie is going to be Easy Rider, directed by Dennis Hopper and starring Dennis Hopper, Peter Fonda, and the brilliant, the brilliant Jack Nicholson. Max Cook is going to give you the introduction. Do it.